Hello. Today's day five of our new chronological Bible reading for this new year. Um, and I was just noticing at the beginning of every day, a reading day, um, it gives, the chronological Bible gives a little paragraph of what's happening in history, what the time period is. So today's reading day five is 2091 uh, to 2081 BC. Um, um, and it, t it tells a little bit about it. And before today's reading, it just gives like a a two page, you know, where we are in history. It talks here and and here. And it just talks about, you know, when the different people are born and how it fits into history. Um, so if you're interested in all that, I'm not going to read that as part of our daily reading. But if you're interested in all that, get the get the um, the Crossway Press Chronological Bible. I'll put the link in the uh, description below um, that you can get your own copy if you'd like to read that part or read along with us. Um, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying it. Otherwise, I'm happy to read it to you, which is why I'm here. <laughs> so day five starts with Genesis chapter 12. And I think, yep, just going to be reading in Genesis today. So we'll just read Genesis 12 through 15. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And that's a blessing for you too. Receive that blessing for yourself. Verse four, so Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran and Abram was, and Abram took Sarai, his wife and Lot, his brother's son and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people that they had acquired in Haran and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, wow, he appeared, <laughs> he appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. I just want to notice, I just want to point out that this is before Jesus. <laughs> this is the Old Testament. And the Lord appeared to Abram. We're reading the Bible to find out who God is and who he is for us and the relationship that we should have with us. If God appeared to Abraham, he'll appear to you too. Nothing is impossible with God. If he did it before, he'll do it again. <laughs> now, but now because of Jesus and because of the Holy Spirit, we have... We have the Lord living inside of us. We have the Spirit of the Lord living inside of us. So he doesn't necessarily have to appear because we can hear him from our inside. But I just want us to take note. <laughs> he did appear. <laughs> um, where were we? Here we are. Okay. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward the Negev. Now there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there for the famine was severe in the land. When he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarai, I know that you're a woman, beautiful in appearance. And when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but they will let you live. Say you're my sister, that it may go well with me because of you, and that my life may be spared for your sake. <laughs> when Abram entered Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful and when the princes of Pharaoh saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. 
and for her sake he dealt well with Abram. And he had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male servants, female servants, female donkeys, and camels. But the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you've done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she's my sister? So that I took her for my wife. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. And Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. Chapter 13. So Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him into the Negev. Now Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. And he journeyed on from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, to the place where he had made an altar at the first. And there Abram called upon the name of the Lord. And Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. At that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were dwelling in the land. Then Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. If you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zoar. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley and Lot journeyed east. Thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward, eastward and westward. For all the land that you see, I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring will also be counted. Arise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron. And there he built an altar to the Lord. Chapter 14. In the days of Armraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elisar, Sherdor Lamor, <laughs> Loramur, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of Goyim, these kings made war with Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Admah, Shemaber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar. And all these joined forces in the valley of Sidim, that is, the Salt Sea. Twelve years they had served Shedor Lamor, but in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year, Shedor Lamor and the kings who were with him came and defeated the Rephaim in Ashtara Karnaim, the Zuzim in Ham, and Imim in Sheva Kiriathame. <laughs> and the Horites in their hill country of Sair as far as El Paran on the border of the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to En Mishpat, that is Kadesh, and defeated all the country of the Malachites and also the Amorites who were dwelling in Hazazan Tamar. Then the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, the king of Bela, that is Zoar, went out and they joined battle in the valley of Sidim with Shedorlamor, king of Elam, Tidal, king of Goem, Amraphel, king of Shenar, and Ariok, king of Elisar, four kings against five. Now the valley of Sidim was full of bitumen pits, and as the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, some fell into them, and the rest fled to the hill country. So the enemy took all the possessions of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their possessions and went their way. 
They also took Lot, the son of Abram's brother, who was dwelling in Sodom, and his possessions, and went their way. Then one who had escaped came and told Abram the Hebrew, who was living by the oaks of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and of Aner. These were allies of Abram. When Abram heard that his kinsmen had been taken captive, he led forth his trained men, born in his house, 318 of them, and went in pursuit as far as Dan, and he divided his forces against them by night, he and his servants, and defeated them and pursued them to Hobah, north of Damascus. Then he brought back all the possessions and all also brought back his kinsman Lot with his possessions and the women, women and the people. After his return from the defeat of Shadolomor and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheva, that is, the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. And the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons, but take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted my hand to the Lord, God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, that I would not take a thread or a sandal strap or anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich. I will take nothing but what the young men have eaten and the share of the men who went with me. Let Aner, Eshcol, and Mamer take their share. Chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir, your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars if you're able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. Wow. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I possess it, that I shall possess it? And he said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he brought him all these, cut them in half, and laid each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in half. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram, and behold, dreadful and great darkness fell upon him. Then the Lord said to Abram, Know for certain that your offspring shall be sojourners in a land that is not theirs, and will be servants there, and they will be afflicted for four hundred years. But I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve, and afterward they shall come out with great possessions. And for you... You shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age, and they shall come back here in the fourth generation, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoky fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your offspring I give this land from the river of Egypt to the river great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Canaanites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. Wow. Wow. That's so good. That's so good. I'm so enjoying this. <laughs> I just love Genesis. <laughs> I love the word. <laughs> Yay. Well, thank you for doing this with me again this year. I really had in my heart to read the Chronological Bible, and I'm really enjoying reading it with you. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you. I love you so much. 
I'll see you tomorrow.